Welcome back from New York. We all traveled to New York together, and we are back in Ghana. I hope Kotoka treated you well, but I am glad I am home. There's no place like home. Welcome to another week and another day of family life with Mama Rita. I'm starting a new series. Hey, I don't know how long it will take. It actually started from last week. If you listen to Reverend uh, Retired Major Chum and his wife, you will realize that we are traveling somewhere. Today, I want to start from the very, very basis. And guess my topic. I didn't want to advertise it. I am doing sex in marriage. But please, I'm not doing R18. So don't sack your children from, from the hall. Um, I'm doing services. If you want R18, we'll have to do a conference with just couples. But I hope you are taking very good care of yourself. My darling, COVID is still real. Um, in America, I had a phone call. Somebody in Ghana died out of COVID. Please take good care of yourselves. Wear your masks. Let there be social distancing. Uh, wash your hands regularly. Take your vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, and then zinc. Please, you need it regularly. If you go to the pharmacy shops, these things are not expensive. You can get... Um, I think a pack, is it a pack of 30 of vitamin C for about 35 to 40 Ghana CDs? You need it. If you tell me it's expensive, wait till you get the COVID. So get vitamin C, get vitamin D, and then get zinc and take it on a regular basis. And then you also need ginger garlic and lemon ginger garlic and lemon and um, with the ginger and with the garlic you peel off the skin and then with the lemon all you do is to wash it you don't need to peel the skin just wash it blend everything together and then drink it every day it builds the immune system as a natural um antibiotics um ginger also has zinc Please, let's all take it. And I believe if every Ghanaian is doing this, trust me, within two weeks, COVID will be out of our country. Let's all take very good care of ourselves because Mother Ghana needs us. I want to give a shout to Dr. Lizzie Parks, Auntie Lizzie, oh Lizzie, I give you a shout. I know you are listening. Every week, you are the one that listens, and you tell me it was good. Uh, my dressing was either good or it wasn't too good. Um, it wasn't Mama rita um, Thank you for being there for me. And then my mate, uh, Patricia Moni, New Jersey. Every week, you listen to me, and I want to give you a shout. Um, Reverend Jo Chum and your wife, thank you so much for giving me two weeks of your time. My audience really, really loved you and enjoyed you. And anytime I'm in New York, trust me, you are coming back again. And anytime you come to Ghana, you'll be in the studio with me. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you. And to all my audience, all the people that watch me from across the world, I want to say a very big thank you you are helping to make family life a success. Today, I am alone. Next week, I might come with somebody or some people I don't know yet, depending on um, if I'm able to finish what I want to do today. And then don't hesitate to send in your questions. If there's time today, we will do question time. We will do a bit of Ask Mama Rita. Otherwise, we will take Ask Mama Rita to next week. Sex in marriage. 
and I want to read from the Bible, biblical basis of sex in marriage. Sometimes people think that it is not in the Bible. They think that sex is not in the Bible. But I want you to know that sex is in the Bible. First Corinthians chapter 7 from verses 3 to 5. First Corinthians, if you haven't read your Bible in a long while, and today you haven't read Bible, I'm reading Bible to you. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. First Corinthians chapter 7 from verses 3 to 5. The husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs. I hope the husbands are listening. The husbands should fulfill his wife's sexual needs. And the wife should fulfill her husband's needs. So my darling, it is the husband and it is also the wife fulfilling your needs. And it says, the wife gives authority over her body to her husband. So in other words, immediately you marry. Wives, your body no longer belongs to you alone. Your body belongs to the man, to your husband. It says the wife gives authority over her body to her husband. And the husband also gives authority over his body to his wife. So I want you to know, man, that your body doesn't belong to you any longer. You don't have absolute right and control over your own body. Your wife does. So it says your body belongs to your wife. Wives, your bodies belong to your husband. And listen to this. It says, do not deprive each other of sexual relations. Don't deprive each other. Unless you both agree, and this is a word I want you to know. Unless you both, please, the Bible doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't make mistakes. It says, unless you both agree to refrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time so you can give yourselves more completely to prayer. So in other words, if one party or one person doesn't agree, then you can't say that I can't have sex. It must be an agreement between the two. He says, afterward, after the prayer and fasting, after refraining from sexual intimacy for a limited, and then listen, it says a limited time. Afterward, you should come together again so that Satan won't be able to tempt you because of lack of self-control. So especially to the wives, a lot of you are allowing Satan to penetrate into your homes and allowing Satan to tempt your husbands. And then some of the husbands are also allowing Satan to tempt their wives. Some time ago, we never heard of women going out of their marital homes to have fun. But these days, it is happening. So both the wife, the wives and the husbands must take note. Sex in marriage. Building and maintaining a good sex life with your marriage partner. And listen carefully to me. I said with your marriage partner. 
I didn't say with your girlfriend or with your boyfriend. I didn't say with your fiancé. I didn't say your new term, going out. I didn't say your going out partner. Side check. This is not what I said. Building and maintaining a good sex life with your marriage partner requires you both investing time and effort. Sometimes it's not just time and effort, but you also have to invest money. Going on a holiday is money, at least. Going to hire a hotel for one night or for a weekend is money, but it helps. You would have to go an extra mile to maintain good sex life. It doesn't just happen, my darling. It takes constant work. Building and maintaining a good sex life takes constant work. It doesn't happen on a silver platter. Now, I want us to go through ingredients that can help you maintain a good sex life. Ingredients, what you need to have to be able to maintain and build a good sex life. Number one, communication. So you see, communication sort of runs through everything. Research shows that good communication in marriage plays a key role in building and maintaining marital satisfaction. If you want to have marital satisfaction, if you want to build your sex life, if you want to maintain your sex life, one key ingredient is communication. You can't decide not to talk to your wife for a whole month. And then within the month, you just want to sleep with her. It doesn't just happen like that. It is a key to a healthy and active sex. Communication is key. A yes, it is key to maintaining a healthy and active sex life in the marital relationship. So communication is key. You need to talk about what you expect in your love making, especially for the newlyweds and for those who just got married or those who are not too long in marriage, even for the people who've been married for so many years, my darling, you need to talk about your expectations. Sometimes we think that what we need or what we want on the marital bed must be known by our partners. My darling, your partner doesn't know. Your partner doesn't know what turns you on. Your partner doesn't know what you enjoy. Your partner doesn't know what you like. Your partner doesn't know what arouses you. Please talk about it. That is communication. Let him know what you expect. Let her know what you expect. You need to discuss when your needs are not being met. I know somebody who's been married for 20 years. And she's never enjoyed mar uh, she's never enjoyed sex before, and yet the husband thinks that oh he's doing his best, and my my wife is having fun and my wife is enjoying. Your husband doesn't know. Talk about it. Unmet expectations can hurt your marriage. So if your expectations are not being met and you are not talking about it, you are hurting your marriage. You are wounding your marriage. If your expectations are not being met by your partner, communicate this tactfully and wisely. I know some women who are perpetually moody. They don't smile. They don't, they don't laugh at home. They are so disrespectful to their husbands. 
And it's all because they are not satisfied sexually. And in their minds, the women, the, their husbands know about it. My darling, he doesn't know. Let him talk about it. Let him know that I'm never satisfied. I remember I had a conference for married couples, and this was R18, where we spoke about all the styles and what you must do and orgasm and all that. And I sent pieces of and paper around and I asked especially the women who have never had orgasm my darling it was 80% of the people in the room and then I asked the husbands do you know whether your wife is enjoying sex with you or not and they didn't know and some of them have been married for eight years some 15 years, some 20 years. So if your expectations are not being met, please communicate this tactfully and wisely with your partner. And for a long time, I used to think that every man enjoys sex. Once they have orgasm, they enjoy. I was so shocked when I met a group of men and they said, oh, some of us don't enjoy. I said, wow. So please, if you're a man and your wife is not satisfying you well in bed, talk about it tactfully and wisely, not with anger. It's important for everyone to understand their partner's expectations, desires, likes, and dislikes. Everybody needs to know. If you are the type that likes to um, use your tongue and your wife doesn't like it, you must know. If your wife is very uncomfortable, you must know. Um, it's not R18, so I don't want to really go deep, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you both need to talk about your dislikes and likes and um, your desires and what makes you very uncomfortable and what makes you feel like you have sinned. Talk about it. True intimacy through communication is one of the things that can make sex great. When you also talk through your issues, all fears about sex will be erased. Some people are not enjoying sex because they are so afraid. My darling, talk about it. Number two. Number one ingredient that can help and maintain a good sex life is communication. Number two, taking care of yourself. Taking care of yourself. Exercising regularly and eating a well-balanced diet gives you the energy, flexibility, and self-esteem during your love making. A lot of women are shy during sex, and I've met women like that because for them, their bodies are not attractive. For them, their stomachs are too big. My darling, eat well-balanced diets. Exercise. Know what to eat at 8 p.m. Don't go and eat kokonte at 8 p.m. Don't go and eat fufu at 10 p.m. Some people are eating wache at 12 p.m. There's a market called Osu Night Market. Hey, in Ghana, Accra, when you get there, you will get everything in the night. Do do everything. There's a place in New York. When you go there at 2 a.m., you will get to Osafi, you will get Fufu, you will get Banku, you will get Kenke, you will get everything. And people are eating this at 2 a.m. 
number one, it's not healthy for you. And number two, it makes you unattractive. There are men who are just 30. You look at their stomachs and you can tell. Their stomachs can be used as collateral at the bank. <laughs> I, met, I met a gentleman. I said, hey, your stomach. He said, Mama Rita, you don't know. If you don't have this kind of stomach, if you go to the bank, they won't give you a loan. <laughs> so please, it is not true. Make yourself attractive so that you can have self-esteem and self-confidence when you have to naked yourself before your partner. Personal hygiene also helps your spouse welcome you better. Shaving the armpits and the palace is important. But you see, it depends on the, the culture you belong to. Some people didn't hear me. I said it depends on the culture and where you are, get, you are coming from. I hear French men, hey, love the armpit when it's bushy. I hear they are always turned on. So they, they always ask their wives not to shave their armpits. Hey, some cultures. As long as you are able to keep the place very neat. But I know most often, people who keep their armpits very, very bushy smell. So as long as you can keep it well, and it turns your wife on, and it turns your, your husband on, please keep it. But otherwise, keep the place very neat for your spouse. I don't know if there's any culture in Ghana that also likes hairy places. I don't know. I haven't heard. Please let me know. But we were taught as Ghanaians since we started um, growing up since we started puberty, we were always asked to uh, shave our armpits and use lemon. My mother will make sure that you use lime and ash. You come back from, the, from school and you are still smelling good out of ash and, and, and lime. If deodorant, your deodorant is not strong enough, please, Let's go back to what our grandmothers taught us. Lemon and ash, and your wife or your husband will love you. A good shower, that's a good bath. Brushing of the teeth, smelling good, stimulates sexual organs. I had somebody who said to me, um, they came to me one time, and the man came reporting the wife. Oh, mommy, my wife never allows me to sleep with, 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 with her. When it's not rainy, she will tell me, wait for a rainy day. When it is raining, she will tell me, Wait till the rain stops. When the rain stops, she says you should have done it whilst it was raining. And it went on and on and on for years. So finally, the man had to bring the wife to me. And for the first time, the man had something he had never heard from his wife. He said, Mommy, when he lies on me, and tries to kiss me, I can't breathe. She said, Mommy, he didn't even say, she didn't even say the smell. She said, the stench that comes from my husband's mouth, I can't just bear it. So it's been so difficult. So the man said, why haven't you told me this all this while? That is why it is very, very important to communicate, talk about things. I believe if they were talking about it, 
it wouldn't have even gotten to me. So you need to find out from your spouse, from your wife, from your husband, how is my breathing, how is my mouth. If your toothpaste is not good, change it. What people don't even know, I, I taught a group of people that ordinary charcoal that we use, you can grind um, charcoal, make it into powder. When you brush your teeth, put it on the, on the toothbrush and use it to brush your teeth, my darling. It takes away the smell from your mouth. Another thing you can also do, some people are brushing their teeth three times a day. They are using mouthwash and it's still bad. Ordinary mint, we have mint leaves. If you go to the market, the fresh mint, after you brush your teeth, just chew a bit and you'll be surprised. And sometimes smelling of the mouth comes from constipation. My darling, I'm telling you the truth. People who constipate, they don't digest the food well. So the food gets rotten in their tummy and then in their intestines. And sometimes it comes out through the mouth. So um, number one, get a very good um, toothpaste. Uh, talk about it. Find out from your wife. Find out from your, your husband. How is my breathing? Um, how is my, my mouth odor? Is it good? Are you comfortable with it? If you are not, trust me, try so many toothbrush, tooth, toothpaste until you are okay. And the people that can use one toothpaste for five years, my darling, a toothpaste, hey, I said toothpaste, toothbrush, you can't use one toothbrush for five years. One toothbrush, three months, maximum six months you must throw away and get a new toothbrush. So please, take very good care of your smell, the mouth, the armpit, and the palace itself. When we talk about palace, people are thinking about the women alone. It's both the men and the women. A neat and a cozy room makes sex more pleasurable it helps in arousal. I've, and it happens to the women a lot. Most often at home, in the, in the bedroom they are used to, they never get orgasm. Let them go out to a hotel and something else. Sometimes the hotel, because of the ambience of the hotel, the way the bed is laid very well, the smell in the room and all that. My darling, when you go to any hotel, ask questions. Ask them, how do you lay the bed? When the housekeepers come, let them teach you how to lay the bed. Sometimes after they've laid the bed, they spray something on it to make it smell so nice that you enjoy the room. Let them teach you, do it in your home and enjoy sex with each other. Number three, shadow a day, and I want everybody listen to this very well. Shuttle a day. Shuttle a day. People are constantly busy these days with work, with studying, with church, and other stuff, that it becomes hard to find time for sex. Just on Saturday, we've been handling stress and then depression and then burn out. People are so stressed up. And I was saying to Dr. Nas, she's one man thousand. Dr. Nas is a full-time wife, full-time mother, full-time director at the Ministry of Health. She's a pharmacist, has her own uh, pharmacy shops. She's full-time taking care of the pharmacy. She's a full-time pastor. She's doing everything. And sometimes when we are not careful, because of stress up, we won't have time 
to ever have sex and make time for sex. The stress and pressure of life and work has become so hectic that it becomes important to schedule a day for sex. You need to set a day aside, one day each week. Yes, you heard me. One day each week, depending on your age. When you are young, it has to be regular. So if Monday works for you, choose Monday. If Tuesday works for you, choose Tuesday. If the weekend, Friday night, works for you, choose Friday. If Saturday or Sunday night, even if it's Saturday morning, works for the two of you, choose. I remember before I got married, a friend of mine went for counseling in the church called Calvary Baptist. Their counseling used to be so good. I don't know about now, so I can't talk now. But in those days, their premarital counseling was so good, just like Royal House Chapel today. Our marital counseling, premarital counseling is so good. So during the counseling, they were taught that you schedule a day in a week. Honestly, it sounded very silly and stupid for me. Ah! Then I wasn't married, and I was looking forward to get married and all the sex I haven't had in the world. I was going to do a kome lebi, a kome shani, a kome beke. I would explain. Normally, when you go to the hospital and they are giving you paracetamol, they will tell you take one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening. Take it three times daily either before meals or after meals. So I said to myself, I will do three times daily, morning, afternoon, evening. Little did I know, oh, that it was a fallacy. Once you get married and children and work and uh, pastoral work and studying and everything takes away all these things. So then I understood the counseling that was given to counselees at Calvary Baptist at the time. My darling, it is so important. And I teach all my counselees. And when I organize um, um, conferences for family life, I tell them, choose a day in a week that is suitable for the two of you. You know it. That quata, 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 quata. This is typical Ghanaian term. Quata, quata, quata. I don't know how to explain quata, quata, quata. The worst scenario, worst case scenario, at least on that day, you would have sex with your partner. It's so important. And that day can be as exciting just as spontaneous sex. So I am not saying that if you choose one day in a week, for instance, Monday works for you, and then on Tuesday you want to have it, you can have it, you can have it. But the only thing is that you need one day as a backup, that you know that if we are busy throughout the week, as for today, we will keep to our schedule. The way you keep to your schedule, the way you keep to your schedule, um, when you have to go to work, you know that it doesn't matter the fun you have um, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning, you have to go to work. It doesn't matter the fun you have on Saturday. You know that Sunday morning you must go to church. It's the same thing. When it comes to sex, on the day you choose, you know that whatever happens, as for that day, it is for the two of you. So please, people must begin to prioritize their sex life 
just the way they prioritize other things. It is so important. That day must be special. And once you know it's a Friday night, right from Friday morning, your foreplay starts. Sex, good sex doesn't start in the evening. Foreplay starts in the morning. If you want to have good sex in the night, I hope you heard me. Foreplay starts in the morning. If you don't know foreplay, a lot of men don't know foreplay. A lot of African men, you go into bed, jump on the woman, and that is it. My darling, women are like iron. When you put it on, it takes them time for them to heat. You know, when you put on an iron and you try to iron immediately, you don't get good results. That is the same thing with women. You need to prepare them. And preparation actually starts from the morning. Send love notes. I love you. I miss you. I can't wait for this evening. Send text messages. Call her and say, honey, I miss you so much. Sweetheart, I miss you so much. Send emails to prepare and build excitement for the sex date. Be nice to each other throughout the day. Don't say nasty things to each other and expect the woman to say yes. It doesn't matter what you say to a man. Even if you say you're a fool and he wants to have sex, he will. Women are not like that. You can't be nasty to a woman and expect that when you want sex, she'll be ready for it. No. That is why it is always important that if you have, you've had disagreements in the day, before you decide to have sex, please, you need to settle it. Whoever has to apologize must apologize. So be nice to each other. Resist the temptation of arguments and quarrels. If you know that you want to enjoy yourself in the night, please be nice to each other. Say hello. Say I love you. Say I miss you. Say, my sugar darling, say, I miss you like Hamatan Popo. Say, my love for you is 99, three quarter percent. All I, hey, Charlie, I'm remembering our days. All I need is one quarter percent. On this note, we will go for a short commercial break and we'll be back. I pray I'll be able to finish this today so next week I can do something else. I'll be back. The World Movers Generation of Royal House Chapel presents Movers and Shakers Conference 2021. It is the annual gathering of youth from across the nation for a time of spiritual importation. The theme for this year is Give Me the Key. Speakers, Apostle General Sam Crunchy Ankara, Reverend Mrs. Rita Crunchy Ankara, and Bishop Charles Ajinosari. It is happening at the Oyo Dome near Obechebi Lamte Interchange. The dates are Saturday 28th August from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on Sunday 29th August two services, morning service at 10 a.m. and evening communion and importation service at 5.30 p.m. This conference will be live on Facebook at Sam Crunchy and Cra, on YouTube at Powerline TV and on your favorite Christian television channel Powerline TV. It is the Movers and Shakers Conference at the Oyu Dome. You don't want to miss this unique encounter with God. Give me the Give key. Me the key. Precious one, I want to specially invite you to the Movers and Shakers Conference at the Royal House Chapel, Ahimfie. It's a season when keys to make you a mover and a shaker will be put in your hands. It's on the 28th of August. I want you to be there. I will be there. Your life will never be the same. God bless you.
welcome back to Family Life with Mama Rita. Today, if you just join us, we are doing sex and marriage. Sex and marriage. And I know this is a topic people have been waiting for for so long. And I said in my introduction that if you are there with your children, don't sack them because I'm not going to go deep. I'm not doing R18. So don't feel uncomfortable before your children. Sometimes it's good to let them also learn these things. Some things are good to learn early enough. Um, please let your questions come in. Um, somebody just sent me a question, and I think the person didn't hear me well um, in talking about how to keep your mouth very refreshed. The person thought I said M-E-A-T, meat. No, I meant mint. M-I-N-T, mint, M-I-N-T. And I'm not talking about the mint toffee. I saw that one, when the sugar goes out, your mouth starts smelling again. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the proper mint that God gave to us, M-I-N-T. Um, when you don't know, when you go to the, the market, for the women who go to the market, and you say you want mint, mint leaves, is a green leaf, and um, you can have it. And then when we were young, we used to, there was one that we used to um, plant it um, at our backyard. It was called a uh, cocoa or something. It was seasoning. We used to use it for seasoning, for meat, for chicken, and all that, so that it doesn't smell fishy. Um, it's a very, very strong, it's not bitter, um, you know, you just put it in your mouth and then bite it a bit. And I'm telling you, it does wonders. And then during the time of our grandmothers, and they also used to do roasted corn. When they were going to, you know, our grandfathers, those were the days where um, women used to live in their quarters and the men used to live elsewhere or the men had their rooms and the women had their rooms. When the women were going to the men, they would chew corn. My grandmother told me they would chew corn, sometimes corn and, and um, granites, peanuts, but just corn, you chew it, rings your mouth, and it really, really refreshes your mouth. So um, try it and you won't regret it. So for the people who just joined us, we are looking at sex in marriage. And we are saying that these days, because of life, because of stress, uh, one person is a full-time wife, full-time husband, uh, full-time worker, full-time student, uh, full-time church leader. You know, we hardly have time for anything. And sometimes these things tend to affect our marriages and affect our sex life. So now I am teaching ingredients that can help us maintain a good sex life. And number one, I said communication. Number two, I said take care of yourself. And this is where the mint came in. And then um, I also mentioned ordinary charcoal. If you live in Ghana, I don't know if you can get charcoal um, in America or Europe, but in Ghana, we have charcoal, um, ordinary charcoal. If you smoothen it, you put it on your, on your toothpaste, on your toothbrush, you use it. And then we've forgotten about sponge, my darling. When we were young, our mothers would let us chew sponge, sarie, uh, kocha, uh, sponge. Um, for the Africans, for the other, uh, for the Ghanaians, for the other African countries, I don't know if you have sponge there. It was something we would chew and to, to make you spit out a lot. Um, what we didn't know was that it was actually detox for our mouth. And then you will use it to, after the thing is smoothing, you will use it to clean your mouth. And we used to see our grandmothers. Um, after they have chewed it and the thing was smooth, they will put it in, in um, ash, the ash from the charcoal, from the fire, from the coal pot, and clean their mouth. And we, was, ah! we didn't know that it was very, 
very good. So um, for those of you that live in Ghana, um, if you are busy in the week and you don't have time to use punch, during the weekends, do it. Sometimes when I have time, you know, I go for sponge. I remember the days of my grandmother and my mother, and I'll go for sponge. And then after I've chewed it, I either get charcoal or, or the ash and then clean my mouth. My brother went um, to UK and then went to the dentist for the very first time. And then the dentist said, you have a very strong teeth. And your jaws are so strong. What have you been doing? And then she said, he said to the dentist, back home, my mother will make us chew sponge in spite of the toothbrush. She will make us chew sponge. And the dentist said, it's really, really helped you. It's very good um, for the gum. It is very good for the jaw. It is exercise for the jaw. And then very good for mouth odor and also very good for the teeth so um Ghanaians we can go back and then start using these things especially during the weekend um somebody sent me something um i think in uk where they are send, selling sponge and then and then chewing steak no it's on um amazon is it amazon that they sell things yes Amazon, they are selling sponge, chewing sponge. Is it for $100 or something? I said, wow, the things we have here that we disregard, they are selling it for $100. Somebody sent it to me. My darling, let's go back to those things. For the Ghanaians who can't get them, please, Amazon <laughs> is selling it. Number four, avoid comparison. And I want people to listen to this very well. Quit comparing your sex life to others or what you've watched on TV or in movies. Movies, my darling. Start, stop comparing your, your sex life with what you watch on TV or in movies or what you hear from other couples. It is said that comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison steals your joy. Comparison takes away your joy. Comparison takes away your self-image. Um, sometimes we think that somebody is doing something that we are not doing. We look at them and we say, oh, or we look at what some wife is doing. We look at what some, some husband is doing. We look at what some children are doing. And we think that, oh, I wish I'm also doing the same. My darling, comparison is robbing you of your joy. You and your partner need to determine what works best for you. Don't compare the number of rounds. In other words, the number of sex you have and the number of times somebody else is having sex i know people have friends they go to work and they have friends and some women will say hey as for my husband my husband can have three rounds in a go we finish one he continues a second one we finish he continues a third my darling sometimes they are lying sometimes they are lying Number two, even if they are not lying, you don't know what they are taking. Some of them are on drugs. Don't force your husband to be on drugs because you heard someone say, talking about it. Don't, you can, yes. So don't compare the number of rounds and the number of times someone else is having sex. You can determine how much and what works for the two of you. So determine what works for the two of you. If you have strength to do three times in a week, please go ahead. If it works well for the two of you, um, if three times a day works for the two of you, go ahead. Don't compare yourself to somebody else. Don't also compare your spouse. Listen carefully. 
Don't compare your spouse to a former girlfriend or a former boyfriend. It is not helpful. If that former girlfriend was good enough, you would have married her. If that former boyfriend was good enough, you would have married him. Stop comparing your spouse, your husband or your wife to your exes, please. Nobody asks you to be tasting before you got married. I always tell um, young couples, if you have never tasted before, the man marries as a virgin, the woman marries as a virgin, there's nobody to compare yourself with. The two of you can teach yourself gradually until you become perfect in bed. But you, before you married, you have tasted brother A, you have tasted brother B, you saw the size of brother C, saw the size of, and then you look at your current husband and you say, oh my God, please. So those who have never had it, if you have never tried, you don't try before marriage. If you have tasted, stop it. You go into the marriage and you realize that you are looking at all the men that slept with you and you are comparing with your husband. You look at all the women you slept with, the one, those who cried, those who screamed, uh, those who beat you, those who slapped you. You are comparing all. Please, stop comparing. It doesn't help. And remember, sex is not going to be perfect each time. And just like I always tell the husbands when they come, I tell them, um, um, cooking is an act. Sometimes you get it very well. It's just like when I do makeup. Today, when I came to the studio, everybody said, oh my God, your makeup is on point. It's like you are going for a wedding. Meanwhile, today is the day that I did my makeup within 10 minutes. I was running late, so within 10 minutes, I was done. The day I take my time, I don't get it well. And when was it? It was a Sunday morning. I really wanted to come to church early. And I spent so much time with my eyebrow. At the end of the day, I looked at my eyebrow, and I, it wasn't that perfect. So it's the same with sex. Some days are very, very good, and other days are not too good. Please get it now. And don't think that every day will be a rainy day for you. Some days are good. Some days are not too good. Some days there'll be a little pepper in the food. Some days uh, the pepper will be okay. Some days there'll be a little much more salt. Other days there won't be salt at all. And other days it will be perfect, my darling. It's the same way. Sometimes within five, ten minutes, I am done with my makeup and I come to church and everybody says, oh my God. And other days I spend an hour, an hour and a half on my makeup and I come to church and nobody says anything to me. So, so is sex. Don't be too hard on yourself. Number five. So number four, avoid comparison. Number five, initiate sex too. And I hope the women are listening to me. Don't expect your partner to be the only one in the marriage to initiate sex. It becomes boring. And sometimes if you are not careful, they might even stop initiating it in the first, um, at, I mean, all together. First five years in marriage, they were the ones who were always initiating sex. My darling, you are old enough in your marriage. You are not a virgin anymore. After that first night in your marriage, you were not a virgin. So after seven years in marriage, stop still behaving like a virgin and stop being shy in bed. You to initiate some. I met a pastor's wife. I was in a pastor's wife's conference and I was teaching about family life, and I asked in the room, how many of the women have never initiated sex? And I got about 70%. I was shocked. And I'm not talking about 
pastor's wife who've been married for a year or two. Some of them have been married 20, 25 years. They've never initiated sex. And that is why two years, A, hey, for six months you've never had sex. One year you've never had sex. Two years you've never had sex. And you are wondering and you are blaming your wife and you are blaming your husband. My darling, if your husband is not initiating sex, he's not because he is tired of doing it all alone. You both have the responsibility for an intimate and romantic relationship. Make the effort for simple things like a head massage, shoulders massage, and a foot massage. It's a long time I did it for my husband, and I know, hey, when I get home, he will tell me, you are the one who went to talk about this. I repent, I will do it. I used to do it very often. But you see, when you are growing, getting 60, oh. But it helps. Whilst he's watching TV, he's reading newspapers, she's busy in the kitchen, just go and, you know, massage um, the shoulders, massage the head. It, it's so soothing. Whilst he's sitting down, go and massage his feet. She's sitting down, go and massage her feet. It's, it's very important. A kiss, a hug, or just a touch can tell your spouse that you are in the mood and ready for action. Sometimes whilst your, your wife is washing dishes in the kitchen, you can just go behind her and give, give, give her an embrace. Whilst your husband is washing the car, you can go behind him, give him an embrace. It's all a way of initiating sex. Holding hands whilst watching TV. Showing affection also helps. Whilst watching TV, you can put your head on each other. It helps. And it also initiates sex. Plan a date night and other activities. When I was talking, I said um, maintaining your sex life um, requires time, energy, and sometimes money. You need to invest in it. Sometimes going out to eat. Um, it's not just going out to where. Uh, nobody is advertising me, so I'm not mentioning any, any restaurant. But the watch is seller. Somebody said, um, I listened to some WhatsApp, and she said, when you, you are, we are courting, or you are courting me, I want fried rice every day. But in any case, if you don't have money for fried rice, I am okay with Wache. <laughs> for those who live outside Ghana, Wache is a delicacy, is, is um, like the Jamaican rice and peas. I think they took it from here. We do it rice and beans, and it's, it's a delicacy here. The men, when you want sex, please help your wife in the kitchen. Let her finish early so that you can enjoy her. Don't allow her to do everything. She's the one washing the dishes. She's the one tidying up. She's the one putting the, the children's clothes in the washing machine. She's the one ironing school uniform before the day, getting their, shoe, their school bag ready. And she's doing this, and she's done by 11. You are ready by 7, and then you are lying in the bed waiting for her. She will tell you she's tired. If you don't want her to tell you she's tired, at 7, do it together. And if you do it together, trust me, instead of she finishing at 11, by 8, 8.30, both of you are done and you can enjoy each other. I'm introducing something 
that a lot of people don't know. So we are looking at ingredients to maintain a good sex life. Number one, communication. Number two, take care of yourself. Number three, schedule a day. In other words, plan a day. Number four, avoid comparison. Don't compare with your former boyfriends and former girlfriends, and don't compare with other guys at work and other ladies at work. Number five, initiate sex. It shouldn't be one person initiating sex all the time. It shouldn't be just the man initiating sex. Neither should it only be the woman initiating sex. Both of you can initiate sex. And my last point is something a lot of people do not know. Or if you know, you don't practice it. Number six is what I call maintenance sex. Maintenance sex. Maintenance sex is having sex just to have it. In other words, having sex for the sake of doing it. Even if you don't feel like doing it, even if you don't want to do it, this is what we call maintenance sex. My darling, you can't always be in the mood. And you can't always say, I am not in the mood and I am not, I am tired. Once a while, if you say you are not in the mood, the man would understand, the woman would understand. Once a while when you come from work and the woman wants it and you say, I am tired, I am stressed, the woman would understand. Once a while when you say you are tired, I am stressed, I am not in the mood, your husband would understand. But if for six months, one year, every day you are tired, every day you are not in the mood, my darling, you need to confess your sins. When you get to heaven, God will ask you questions. Why? Because you are leading your, your, your husband to go out of the marital home. You are leading your wife to go out of the marital home. And the Bible says that woe unto the one from whom the temptation comes from or from whom the sin comes from. If you lead somebody to drink, woe to you. It's not just the person who is drinking, but the person who caused him to drink. If you cause somebody to fornicate, it's not only the one who committed fornication or the one who committed adultery, who has sinned, but also the one who led the person. That is why the Bible even warns parents that we should be careful we do not tempt our children. If you lead your children to a place where they can say something nasty to you, my darling, your son or your daughter has sinned, but you too, you have sinned in leading them on. So husbands and wives, don't lead your wives or your husbands to commit adultery. Mental and sex is crucial to the health of your relationship. Maintenance sex is crucial to the health of your relationship. For a lot of you, your relationships are sick. You need to go to OPD. For some of you, your, your marriages and your sex lives actually need surgery. And tonight, we are in the theater and I'm doing surgery on you. Maintenance sex means keeping the sex up to ensure both people in the relationship are sexually satisfied. So you don't want it. Your husband wants it. Give it to him. Let him be satisfied. And trust me, it makes the relationship healthy. The man doesn't want it. The woman wants it, give it to her, 
let her be sexually active, hey, satisfied, and then you make your relationship healthy. Sometimes your partner wants to get it. And all you want is your favorite TV program, my darling. Um, I used to work in a, in a male-dominated office. And then I wasn't even married. And the men will come and they'll be talking and I'll pretend like I'm not listening. They'll say, hmm, my wife today, I wanted to do it. And all she wanted was... To, to put rollers in her hair. I said, if you want to put rollers in the hair, you lie down, put the rollers and let me do it. Please, things are happening in homes. Sex sounds time consuming and annoying. But if one person wants it, my darling, let it be. Or maybe when you really want to have sex, your partner always seems to be too tired or stressed. Wait to hear me next week on the advantages of having sex, my darling. Advantages. Sex, I'll come to it. But what people do not know is that sex takes away stress. Sex takes away Mental health. Sex makes you slim down. Hey! Next week you will hear things. In marriage, it is important to have sex even if you are not necessarily ready and in the mood. Listen. In marriage, it's important to have sex even if you are not necessarily ready and in the mood. I can see some, some husbands doing their wives like this. Have you heard? Please tell them. Listen to Mama Rita. And some wives should also tell their husbands. Listen to Mama Rita. Maintenance sex shouldn't be the only kind of sex you are having. In other words, you can't have maintenance sex all the time, but it's absolutely something you should add to your vocabulary. I hope somebody heard it. You can't have maintenance sex all the time, but add it to your dictionary that sometimes Maintenance sex is very important. Maintenance sex keeps the, the marriage very healthy. Maintenance sex helps the man not to go out. Maintenance sex helps the women not to go out. Maintenance sex takes the devil out of your home. A lot of you have opened your your doors are ajar and the enemy has entered. Tonight, please, as you heard me, tonight, suck him out. When I am done, on your marks, get ready, Pim, go into the bedroom. Next week, I am going to ask you what you did with what I taught you this week. If I realize that you just enjoy listening and you are not putting it into practice, I will make sure when I come on, your TV will go off. But please, if you don't want your TV to go off, listen carefully. And then, maybe in my conclusion, because today I'm doing introduction. Um, maybe I'll leave our questions today. Um, let your questions keep coming. And then next week I will handle it. Next week I want to do advantages of having sex. A lot of people 
do not know that there are advantages of having sex. My darling, sex is so, so important. There are psychological reasons for having sex. There are physical reasons for having sex. There are emotional reasons or emotional benefits for having sex. And there are medical benefits of having sex. Number one, psychological. Number two, emotional. Number three, medical. And then number four, physical. One of the physical reasons is that sex can let you lose weight. You've been complaining that your wife has gained weight, my darling. It's not just the gym that will help your wife lose weight. It's not just cutting down on the carbohydrates and cutting down on the fats. Help her through sex. Let her lose weight. You've been complaining about the stomach of your, of your husband, that his stomach has become a point of collateral. My darling, help him. Let the stomach become flat as he lies on you. So next week, we will do um, benefits or advantages of having sex. And then we would also do painful sex. Painful sex. We will go into it. Some people go through so much pain when they have sex. And I would invite a couple that got married and for two to three years, they never had sex because the woman couldn't bear it. They will share the experiences, tell you what they did, so that if you're also going through the same thing, it will help. And then we would also invite a doctor or doctors to help the men who are only 40, yet they can't perform. Show you what to do, the medications to take, that it will help you satisfy your wife in bed. It's going to be very, very interesting in the next weeks to come. In my conclusion, seek help when you need it. If you and your partner are having trouble building and maintaining a fulfilling sex life, you may need to seek help from a trained professional who can help you take steps to resolve the issue. If you are going through issues in your sex life, my darling, seek help. The first person you can seek is to seek, seek counseling. A lot of you, when we were taking you through premarital counseling, you didn't listen to anything. You actually didn't hear anything. All you were thinking about was your wedding gown, your suit, the flower girls, the bridesmaids, the page boy, the little bride, photo shoots. I don't know where these things are coming from. Save the dates. People don't have money yet. They are doing save the date, doing photo shoots, buying drinks, wedding cake. Where, where you don't have money, you can use candles to light. And it symbolizes the same thing. If you don't have money, you can use your toe and cut your toe, and it still becomes memorable. If you don't have money, my darling, you don't need to do a buffet. I always say it. I went to one wedding where I was the maid of honor, and it's the best ever wedding I have ever attended. After the wedding, guess what we ate? Kenke, shito, and sardine. And I've never forgotten about that wedding. Don't compare yourself with other people. You do not know. For all you know, the weddings you see big. Parents helped. Grandparents helped. Aunties helped. Godparents, godfathers, and godmothers helped. You, you don't have anybody.
cut your coat according to your size. So if you were one of those who never had anything during the premarital counseling, go for a refresher course. Seek counseling. Go back to your marriage counselor. If your marriage counselor is not endowed with help um, handling sex and marriage, please, we always have senior counselors. If you belong to a church where um, the sex and marriage um, part wasn't very good, I always say it, our doors are opened in Royal House Chapel. Even in Royal House Chapel, if we gave you a counselor, especially in Nahimshie, Reverend Agre or myself gave you counselors and they didn't do a very good job on a particular topic, please, it's not like you are um, reporting the counselor. Come back, we will help you go through um, sex in marriage. The next person you can talk to in seeking help is that you can talk to a doctor. A lot of people are having erectile dysfunction. In other words, they can't perform. Um, recently, I was hearing, or oh, I heard some message on, on WhatsApp, and it sounded so funny, and I sent it to my husband. Somebody was talking about some area where there are very, very rich guys there. I mean, very, very rich guys. Very rich guys. They have money. Yet the road leading to that place is so bad. So somebody was going on that street and saying, ah, look at where rich people are. Look at their road. Are they saying they can't come together and fix this road? They are waiting for the government to fix the road for them. And all they do with their money is to go for small, small girls. And what even pains him is that even when they go for the small girls, they can't even perform. Within a minute, they are done. My darling, if you are in such situation, it might not be your fault. It might be your upbringing. It might be what you went through. Recently, I handled a couple, and they've been married for about five years without children. So they came to me, and then I advised them. They've been doing prayer and deliverance and all that. I said, enough of the prayer, enough of the deliverance. Now seek medical help. When the lady went, they checked everything. They checked her tubes. They checked everything. And she didn't have a problem. And I want the men to listen. Sometimes we think that it's only the women who have the problem, but sometimes the men also have problem. When they went, it wasn't like low sperm count. He wasn't even producing sperms at all. He is somebody who goes through orgasm and everything. He enjoys himself. Apparently what comes out is actually not sperm only for him to realize that when he was three years old, he went through surgery. And it was the surgery that caused that. My darling, seek medical help. Sometimes it could be some surgery you did. Sometimes it might be too much heat in your room. Sometimes it would have to do with the nylon underwears you wear. I mean, you may never know. So if you are going through issues with satisfying each other in bed, or you are going through painful sex, or there's so much heat, I mean, there's something that is so unbearable. It might not be your fault. Seek medical help. And it's always very important to um, get a second opinion. If you go to one doctor, sometimes, that particular doctor might not know at all. Um, the couple I'll be bringing went to about three, four, five doctors, and the doctors had never heard or seen um, the kind of problem the woman was going through before. 
So it is always very important to, after you've sought for medical help, if you don't get the necessary help, seek um, a second opinion. God bless you. Thank you for spending your evening with me. And thank you for spending your time with me. I hope you have enjoyed and you have learned something. I will come your way same time, same day next week. Until then, make sure that today I did what you call home management in school. And after home management, we will do practicals. You will bring ingredients and you will come and cook in school. I also did general science. In general science, after we've been taught the theory, we were asked to go to the science lab and to do practicals. My darling, tonight, do practicals and bring in your questions. Don't be bothered that I didn't answer your questions, but I'll come your way next week with the questions. And next week, we are going to do the benefits of having sex. I want you to know that if you haven't had sex for, your, for some time, you are depriving yourself of benefits. Sex it gives you long life. You may never know. I will let you know next week. God bless you. Until then, take good care of yourself. Continue to wash your hands. Wear your nose marks. Um, um, do social distancing. And if you haven't gone for your vaccination, please do. God bless you and I will come your way. But then, on the 28th of, of August, 28th of August, next week, Saturday, and next week, Sunday, we are doing what we call um, WMG. WMG is WM, hey, can you imagine? World Movers Generation is a conference you will never forget in your life. It's a conference for young men and young women. It's a conference for to be billionaires. It's a conference for future CEOs. It's a conference for those who are ready to take over the nations. And our theme for this year is give me the key. My darling, Apostle General, myself, and Bishop Ajenasari will be handing keys to you that will help your marriage today and tomorrow. The keys will be given to you will be keys that will help you take over this nation. And then on Sunday, oh my God, I can't also wait. Bishop Alote would also be here with us. And then Sunday evening, that is 29th, we are having communion, anointing, and impartation service. After we've given you the keys on Saturday, on Sunday evening, you'll be crowning it with a powerful communion service. As you take the blood, and as you take the body, and as you apply the oil, Trust me, the keys would have been given to you. What you couldn't do yesterday and you haven't been able to do today, by next weekend, you'll be able to do it. Make a date with us and God bless you. I love you. Have a good night and sleep well.